Hey everyone, welcome back to another Tic Tac Tyco. Today, I'm going to present to all of you a fun composition tool called Random Rhythm. With Random Rhythm, you can come up with new patterns every single time you use it, whether you want to use it for composition, for soloing, or just pure entertainment. First thing we have to do though is figure out what you'll need to do your Random Rhythm. So, if you're going to create a Random Rhythm, you only need a couple of things. To start, a piece of paper, a pencil, and either some dice or dice rolling apps. Now I haven't tried any of these so I can't vet them, I can't promote any of them, but they all seem pretty highly rated. I mean, it's a dice app. You're not going to get a lot, so it's pretty easy to meet expectations. Um, however, I am going with the dice route because I have them, but if you don't, feel free to download an app and you can still do your random rhythm. For the dice wielders, the only two dice you need at minimum for this version is an eight-sided die and a six-sided die. Everything else is optional. However, I will be using multiple dice that I have here because it will make it easier to follow along and to clarify which dice are doing what. So, before we get to actually rolling our rhythm, we have to do one piece of prep work. So before you start to roll on your paper, you need to mark down each of the downbeats and upbeats that you plan to use. I've got an eight count pattern, so I have eight downbeats and eight upbeats. And this is exaggerated in size to make it easier for you to see at home. Normally these are gonna be a lot smaller, but I want you to be able to follow along. You don't have to have graph paper. You don't have to make cubes and little arrows. You can make lines or circles and dots. You can use happy faces if you want, whatever works. It's your pattern whatever's convenient for you. But I happen to have graph paper and it makes it prettier, easier to follow along. Once you have this done, you're ready to roll. And here we go. Step one, you need to determine how many notes you're going to create. So for eight count pattern, I'm going to use two six-sided dice. Now I have a third one here, but for this exercise, I'm only gonna use two. If I happen to get a really low number, like five or less, I will re-roll. But in reality, maybe a four count pattern is really cool. Maybe a 12 count pattern is too much. Just this exercise, I'm choosing to roll six through 12. Nine, nine is a perfect number for this exercise. So now that we know the number, we're gonna mark it down here. Nine total notes. Now our first note, we determine where it is from the eight-sided die. It's an eight. Is it a downbeat or an upbeat? We're gonna choose even for downbeat and odd for upbeat. It's an upbeat, so it's the eight and. We're gonna leave that last die alone for now, and we're gonna mark a don on the eight and. This is our Dawn. I make that a little bigger. Okay. It's okay if it's sloppy. We're not going to be putting a ton of notes. So our first note is on the eight and. Next note. Next note is on the four and it is on the downbeat. Downbeats are even. So four is a downbeat. We'll add it here. Again, a little messy, but it's all good. So those are our first two notes, pretty simple. For our third note, I'm going to bring in the third die. This die I'm using to tell me what kind of tone I'm going to be producing on the Tycho. So in this case, I'm going to say one, two, three is a don, four and five is a tsu, and a six is a ka. So that gives me a three and six chance of a loud note, two and six chance of a quiet note, and a one and six chance of a rim shot. So let's see what happens. I'll roll them all, save some time, and I get 
the six on a downbeat, that's a don. Okay, here we go. Da, da, da. All right, now before I continue finishing the pattern, I do want to make a couple of notes about first this die. I decided to break it up into three uneven amounts three, two, and one. If you're doing this at home, you can decide one and two is a don, three and four is a ka, five and six is a tsu. Doesn't matter, it's totally up to you. Another thing you will encounter eventually is you're going to get some duplicate notes. So let's say I roll the dice, I get the exact same thing. It's a six on a downbeat. Well, I already have a six on a downbeat. This is where you need to determine your own rules. I decide that if I've got two don, I make that don accented. I might accent it by putting a little mark on top or um, highlighting it underneath, something like that. If I have a don and a tsu, I will re-roll the note I just rolled because that doesn't really work. If I have a don and a ka, well, I can decide I'm going to play both at the same time or I might re-roll. It really depends on what I feel like I want my rules to be. It's good to determine how you want to set up duplicate rules before you start to roll so that you don't have to stop and consider what you're deciding at the moment. So I've got three notes, six to go. I'm going to finish the pattern using the three dice with the same rules I just described. I will speed the video up so that you can follow along if you want without having to agonize over every single roll and whatever little mistakes and, and things I have to scribble in or erase along the way. So, here we go, six more notes. And there is our nine note pattern. Three and four, five and six and eight and. Now I didn't mention how I'm notating the don and the tsu and the ka, but you can see it on the paper. The don is the filled in square. We've got one tsu here, which is a empty square. Uh, double don, whoops, double don. I marked with the accent like I mentioned, and I've got a ka that's an X. So this is really simple, and again, you can use whatever kind of notation you like. It's just a nice, easy way to scribble stuff down. I would not recommend using Western notation because you never know if it's going to be a 16th note or an 8th note, or if you're going to have to put rests in there. It's nice to just scribble things down. Then you can notate it if you want. So here's our pattern. We know what it looks like, but what does it sound like? So let's sing it through once, nice and slow, just to get an idea. Each ni so re one and two and don 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 ka don okay well it's a pattern um, let's repeat it at a faster tempo say four times just to get a better feel don 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 su don ka don 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 su don ka don 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 su don ka don 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 su don ka don. Okay, it's I'm starting to get a flavor for this pattern. Um, I'm not necessarily sold on it. It's not going to be the next big hit in the taiko world, but it's a playable pattern. It's easy to follow along. And next thing I'm going to do is play this actually on the drum pad with bocce um, and increase the tempo and see. See if it becomes something that's got uh, a little bit of a groove to it or something that's cooler when it's played faster. So follow me to the demo. So I've got the metronome set at 90 beats per minute. Let's see what this pattern sounds like when played live. Each so, okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight.
Okay, I've bumped the tempo up to 120 beats a minute. Let's see what the pattern sounds like now. Each beat, so big. So, you can see how using random rhythm starts you out with a blank piece of paper and some random dice rolls, and you wind up with a legit taiko pattern that would sound great on top of a G or maybe underneath another pattern or two. It could be the foundation of a new taiko piece or maybe help you breathe life into a solo that you might feel stuck in. This is by no means a taiko exclusive tool. It's simply a rhythm generator. And the pattern that I created today was definitely on the simpler side, but next week I'm planning on using the same tools, the same random rhythm, to create a mini piece that's much more complex and much more complicated. Also, you may have noticed that the intro and outro music to this video, which I haven't written yet, is based on the pattern that I created just a few minutes ago. So, I would love to hear your discoveries and your success stories using Random Rhythm, so please leave them in the comments below. Uh, if you like this video, if you like this tool, let me know with a thumbs up. And hitting that subscribe button is not a random act, it's an intentional one done by awesome people like you. So until next time, keep rolling and be well.